Hey Internet, I'm Chaz. And I'm Dan. This is the Wine of Serious Business Show, episode 62. And what are we doing today? Uh, we're here today with, uh, with, with a guest, a uh, good friend, Sasha Kearns. And we're going to talk about wine and art in the visual sense. Um, I think one of the things that's kind of important to both of us, that, that always has been, is, is uh, the way we describe wine, the way we approach it, the way we think it's experienced is really in parallel with a lot of other great kinds of art, you know, visual art, music, etc. I was talking about that with Seisha here, who studied a lot of visual art in college and uh, also enjoys drinking wine. And we're like, that'd be an interesting show. That'd be fun to talk about sometime. So why don't you tell us a little more about that? Well, uh, I guess Dan framed it really nicely about how uh, there's certain elements um, of, of wine that are really kind of parallel art, um, visual art, music, whatever it may be, that I think oftentimes Art, whether it's um, a painting or a song that you love, uh, one of the really valuable aspects of the piece is that it, it evokes a response in you. And, and the emotional response is usually the one that sticks with you, that you, know, you want to listen to that song over and over again, and you just can't take your eyes off that piece of work, or every time you see it, it brings up a memory, or um, something that really connects you to it. And I, perhaps as a wine drinker, you've had that experience where you take that first sip and it just it, it makes it gives you some sort of emotional response right away, and so um, in that sense, there's there's some similarities, but there's also I think ways that you can talk about art and evaluate your response to it and the qualities of the work that is similar to how we talk about wine. So there are things like uh, how how um, what's what's the shape of this? What's the body of it like? Um, how does uh, how integrated is, is a piece? Does it feel kind of disjointed, or is everything sort of flowing together? Um, how are, what are the different um, qualities that are coming up and, and how uh, the, the flavors relate. I don't know, I guess art has flavor sometimes. <laughs> it does, it does actually, yeah. <laughs> yeah, sure. and um, I guess uh, I think the, the weight to it, weight and tone is another one, I guess. Other qualities that you might use to evaluate a piece is how, what kind of a, um, uh, I don't know, the, 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 the weight of the work, I guess. Totally. I don't even know. <laughs> Okay, so we're going to get into yep. wine number one. Um, this is the uh, Domaine Michel Jouillot, I believe. Uh, this is a uh, white burgundy from Mercure. Um, yeah, I've had good experiences with this producer in the past. Looking forward to checking this wine out. 2007. 2007. Yeah. So. Woody oaky. on the nose. Yeah, oaky right, right off the bat. Yeah, surprisingly oaky. Kind of like a little peaches and cream thing going on. And bananas. A little bit of banana action going on there. Oh, yeah. That, even more so. More yeah. bananas in the cream, I think. Yeah. I warm up to these more slowly. <laughs> and you can make those responses really That's quickly. cool. Huh? Oh, I have to think about it a little bit more. There's some kind of warmth happening, too, in the snow, I think. Like alcoholic warmth? Or like campfire? Or like... <laughs> yeah, like campfire warmth. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, the oak plays full on the palate, um, but it's, it's balanced pretty well. Wow, and the banana really shows through, too. There's like this rich fruit flavor, but it's not like this rich sweet fruit that you get out of like Sauterne or a lot of the right. like residual sugar style white wines. Yeah, and the banana does play pretty heavily in the mid palate. The oak is there throughout the entire experience. The acidity is actually pretty nice on this, too. Um, not super strong, but enough, right? But I think it, it ends kind of bitter. It seems like a good. Seasonal wine makes me think of autumn, like a fall. I kind of see that. The acidity dries things out, mm -hmm. kind of tart, and then definitely the, yeah. It does tarten up in the finish. Yeah, for sure. It turns a little bitter, but not bad. And the oak sticking around, but uh, I guess we should probably score before we get onto the visual, too. 87 for me. Nice wine. I enjoy the texture. Yeah, the texture is full. I like mm -hmm. that. I like the, it didn't. But we it, really talk but about the, that, yeah. Yeah, but the oak and the fruit isn't terribly well integrated, and mm -hmm. uh, I, you know, I enjoy the flavors, but not a lot of excitement. This is a fuller bodied white wine for sure. Mm -hmm. 86 points for me. I just, it, it's got a really odd way of coming about what it does, like the flavors and the, the oak, but that said, it's full and it's actually kind of nice tasting, and yeah, it's hard to fault it, right? Like, a, yeah. I think you're involved with doing some good too. Yeah, yeah, it could come together, but. Yeah. All right. Well, so what sort of art does this remind you of? So, um, I think that there are some of the things you were saying 
uh, resonate with a few of the works that went to mind right away for me, but I had, as I was thinking about some of the um, emotional response to this, I guess, there are some, there's a sense of trepidation that came up, um, a little bit of um, anxiety that I think, like, with the texture you're talking about, there's kind of this, there's some sort of boldness that's happening mm -hmm. in it. Um, and so, uh, this is maybe a really... Uh, unfair comparison, but, <laughs> um, but you know, one of, the, one of the things that I thought about when we were talking about doing this show was how we have a certain, uh, we start with a certain repertoire, so there's, and I think it's the same thing when you're learning about um, art or you're learning about music, um, and oh. when you're learning about wine, that you have a certain frame of reference, and until you've exposed yourself to a more variety of things and have a greater sense of, uh, you know, more things in your pocket to compare to um, gives you a greater vocabulary and a, and a greater sense of... Um, wine in your palate. Sense, yeah. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So, um, uh, so I guess I'm, I'm kind of thinking of well, what are the images that I've been exposed to in my life with art and the things that, that kind of that would come up in the in the card catalog of images. And one of them is this work by Joseph Boyce, who is a, a really um, a sculptor uh, who did a lot of really socially challenging works. And he liked to do things called social sculpture, where he would um, do very interactive pieces and do installation and uh, there is this work that, um, I'm forgetting the name of now, but uh, he, he liked to play a lot with texture. And so that kind of came up for me. And, and texture in the form of things like um, wax and wool. And, uh, sure. and he has this, this work that, um, it's, it's, a, it's him holding a dead hair. And he's got some kind of crazy makeup going on, and <laughs> he was sort of a performance artist too, mm -hmm. right? The picture um, of this online, right? I can find one. Yes. Make it great. Yes. So you all will okay. be seeing that. Yeah. Yeah. So it's kind of a, it's it's a little bit startling, and <laughs> so that, I think there's some of that boldness coming up in here, that and also this, it kind of ends in a really, um, I don't know. There's a lot of there's some complicated things happening, but it's also really straightforward. Oh, here's this really striking image of this person holding a dead rabbit, <laughs> <laughs> and I could give some more background on it that I'm not. Fair enough. So, so I guess in, in, in like the short term evaluation too, like do you like this? Is this something you'd seek out to try again? Or recommend to friends? Or is this something you'd steer clear of? And again, like art and, and wine, there's personal preference. Mm -hmm. And there are works that, um, you know, you might be in a museum and somebody's going to look at uh, a, a color field painting and say, you know, my, my daughter could have done that, my three year old could have done that. That's, that's not art, that's not impressive. And someone else is going to go there and look at it and have a very moving spiritual experience. So. Uh, so again, it's not something, I'm, I'm not particularly moved by this one, sure. All right. but uh, we'll see what happens next. Alright, on to one number two. This is the uh, J. Lore Cabernet Sauvignon, uh, it's from Paso Robles in uh, 2008. So California, we're going to do a little rinse here. Oh yeah. So swirl it around, kind of clean this out. being pretty nice today. Yeah, being <laughs> nice on the rinses. And another point that I want to make, comparison between wine and art, like all styles, one of the uh, one, of, one of the like growth paths or things that you come to appreciate more is the technical aspect of it, right? As you talk to winemakers, learn how it's made, how the fruit was in the year that it was harvested, is a lot like uh, be more. Okay, okay, it's a lot like talking <laughs> talk to talking to painters, you know, and learning about who they're influenced by, and uh, you know, and a lot of tech, you know, I don't know enough about visual art to really talk about technical details really well, but you know, there there are these parallels, and the more you appreciate that, even if you're not going to pursue the craft yourself you still have some insight into what's going on with the wine, the ideas that went into creating it. Yeah. Wine number two. Points, great points. Cali Cab. Cali Cab. Mm. Fruit bomb. <laughs> 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 yeah, plums and blackberries. A little bit of Grape Jolly Rancher, maybe. Yeah, super blackberries, yeah. <laughs> grape Jolly grape Rancher. There is some Grape like. Jolly Rancher in it. Oh. The blackberries play so heavy on it, mm. though. It's like super blackberry, like, almost, almost jammy. Yeah, and just a little bit of stems, not a lot. I think a lot of Cabernets I'll find some more in, but there's just a little, little green note kind of mixed in with everything. Sort of, the sort of blackberry jam you put over pancakes, like this is pretty damn jammy to me. It looks, rich. It's very yeah. rich, yeah, yeah. What do you think? Um, I, again, the repertoire, I'm not so good at, at responding to the, to the smell of things, but, um, just what are you smelling? but it's great. It's, it's, um, there is a lot of richness. I like I, I, the, the I respond to the jammy because mm -hmm. of how um, it kind of it makes me think of like a meatiness. Like it's really nice. Mm -hmm. Oh, totally. Like, yeah. Meaty yeah. happening there. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Interesting thought for you. So both these wines are showing significant oak too. Do you smell mm -hmm. a similarity between the nose at all, despite being totally mm -hmm. different grapes? 
I wouldn't say this is <laughs> 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 Um, I'm getting some of the blackberries. They're lighter than I expected based on the nose. Um, and then I'm getting a big like bloom of like grapefruit across the mid palate, which is really interesting. There's a lot more acidity in this wine than I would have expected, you know, on purchase and you know, and by smelling it. Um, and I really like the acidity, of course. You know, that makes me pretty happy because it cleans things out, dries the mouth out, and after everything dries out, like the primary fruit kind of fades away. Then you get some of that richness afterward, and that's where some of these like caramel flavors. A little bit of sweetness is coming through after the mouth dries out, so it's kind of an interesting evolution. Um, yeah, nailed it. And, and you can definitely tell that the, you can definitely tell that it's not not like like super complex or super rich. Um, it's it, this is really affordable wine, and that kind of shows a bit. But the but the you know but the flavors are well put together. There's some interesting evolution. There's nothing really off putting, right? Like Cabernet at this price, a lot of times you get really destructive tannins or problematic alcohol that just you know just burns your mouth up. None of that's going on. Um, that said, I'm not as partial to the Cabernet mm -hmm. in general, so I'm going to go with uh, I'm going to go with 87 plus on this. You know, digging it. Not a ton of excitement, but definitely nice wine. Um, and you know, when we were talking earlier, like like how it brings art together. Like this definitely feels like something with dark colors to me. I mean, that's you know a pretty primitive yes, leap yes. you know for for someone that's not that individual art and obviously the you know dark wine dark colors but it does kind of leave that feel to it there is a there is a sense of depth to it even if it's not necessarily profound like mm -hmm. like you have more exciting wines i think yeah it's really um there's it's very accessible but there are some subtleties too and um i'm, I'm thinking of a uh, work by john singers I, I don't know if i'm gonna get his name right i don't know if they say sergeant sergeant i think he's, he's french we screw up all of our French pronunciations yeah. on the oh, show. Great. Don't worry about it. Great. Right. <laughs> Just tear it up. We're Americans. <laughs> <laughs> Silly Americans. <laughs>